One of the biggest trends going around in security is zero trust. And one of the challenges that I've personally had was understanding what zero trust really means. So zero trust a single product, platform, what is it? That's exactly what we'll be covering in this video. Hi, my name is Avenizer Gerberhewan and I am a security client technical specialist at IBM. In this video, we'll be talking about what zero trust means and what are organizations doing to practically implement zero trust uh, into their security infrastructure. So let's start by defining what zero trust is. Zero trust is not a product or a platform. Instead, it's a security framework built around never trust, always verify, assuming breach. So the zero trust principle is broken down. Never trust, always verify. Every time a new user, device, or application is making a connection attempt, make sure you verify it. That's the first principle. Number two is implement least privileges. Only grant users and application the least amount of privilege to do their jobs and nothing more. And third is assume breach. This helps you plan for the worst case scenario and build a well-tested incident response plan. So what, what this means is traditionally the IT industry has relied on perimeter security, mostly focusing on external threats, building a wall high enough to protect our networks. This no longer applies because of two main reasons. The first one is what we all know, employees are working from home more than they are in the office. And two, because hybrid multi-cloud is the primary platform for enterprise infrastructure these days. With Zero Trust Framework, every endpoint is considered a threat, whether it's internal or external, even those that are already inside of our networks. Now that we have defined what Zero Trust means, let's talk about what organizations are practically doing to implement Zero Trust into their security infrastructures. Before I get into that, I want to mention Bob Kalka. He did a great job explaining this topic. Most of my content is from his video, so I'll make sure to link his video down below. So there's hundreds of security controls to implement zero trust, but today we'll be talking about 12 of the most used security controls. First, let's break it down into categories. First one is users. Two is access, third is data, and reasons. And the idea behind this is for the right users to get access to the right data for the right reasons. So let's start with some security controls with users. First one is identity governance. And what this means is who has access to what in the organizations. Number two is identity analytics. The Does it make sense for this person or group to have access to this data? That's what we mean by identity analytics. And third is privilege account management, also known as PAM. This is for insider threats, right? For example, who's able to install or remove software, upgrade the operating system, or modify system or application configurations. Now, let's get to the second group, access. So the first tool is access management. What this means is, can a person get access to this application? And two is adaptive authentication. I find this one the most interesting one because the way it works is it creates a profile for each user, uh, which includes things such as the geolocation, the registered device, or the role in the organization. So when that, let's say employee X is outside of that profile, it flags it and tries to re-authenticate the whole process. All right, now let's get to the data piece of security controls. First one is discovery and classification. What this means is let's figure out where all our company sensitive data is, both on premise or on cloud, whoever the cloud provider is. All right, and once we do that, the second piece of that is encryption. Once we find out where the data is, let's lock it down. That's basically what encryption is. And the third one is data 
and file activity monitoring. So this means limiting access based on need. This person should have access to this data, but not this other data because it's not connected to their jobs. And once we encrypt the data, we need to manage the encryption keys protecting the data. And this is where key management comes in. All right, now that we have covered um, the right users getting access to the right data, let's talk about how they are accessing it for the right reasons. And the first one is data risk insights. Data risk insights. So this basically looks over access to my sensitive data over some period of time and runs fraud detection algorithms against it and looks for access that you may have missed the first time while setting it up. And two, let's talk about fraud. And this just means being able to handle transactional fraud. And the last piece of this is config management. I'm going to break this down into three different pieces. First one is devices. Second part is the network. And third is cloud native stack. So for devices, that basically means our laptops, mobile devices, and servers. And for network, it's securing the whole organization's network as a whole. And for cloud native, I'm going to give you an example uh, for this one. So let's say a DevOps team puts different workloads and sensitive data out to potentially multiple clouds. And that hurts a lot of organizations today because they don't have a lot of insight to manage and configure this properly. So here are all the 12 security controls that we see are the most um, organizations are applying for their zero trust implementations. I hope this video was able to provide some value in regards to zero trust. If it did, please make sure to support this channel by subscribing and liking this video. Thank you so much and see you on the next one. Bye.